prefer to walk on carpet to smash. Shall we make a start? <laughs> we shall see. Okay, everybody ready? Yeah. Okay. Now we've got the largest trio in the world with the four people. Folks, as you know, it's the rules of this Opry House not to refund any money. Just try to enjoy the show as best as you can. Bring them out, boys. Welcome back. It's Sunday morning. Welcome to Hot Jazz Church. Um, so, the music of the Mount City Blue Blowers. Named after which city? Anybody know? The Mount City? There was a clue in that last tune, actually. Manchester City. Manchester City. St. Louis, Missouri, where they met in 1924. Um, right. So they, they played for a long time. They started, as I say, in 24. They went into the early 30s or mid 30s. Um, and everybody probably has their own favourite period from the history of the Mount City Blue Blowers. The sensible thing to do would be to try to cover all of it. Never mind, we're not going to do that. We're going to focus on 1929 to 1931 when they made two films. I don't know if they were Vitaphone, but they were certainly early soundy films. One was called The Opry House and one was called Nine O'Clock Folks. Both of them were um, sort of variety vaudeville shows with different acts. One of them has uh, a close harmony female singing quartet uh, a performing dog act and a comedian with big shoes and you'll see tributes to all of those acts later today on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So, the next one we're going to do... Uh, the dogs, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I Ain't Got Nobody, which is going to be sung for you by Mr. Spencer Lennon.
sweet mama, take a chance on me. Now I'll sing you sweet love songs, baby, all of the while. If you'll come and be mine, sweet baby, you're mine. Now that's why. about the Man City Blue Blowers in due course, but before we go any further, I think we're going to have our first special guest appearance. Everybody loves a special guest, and on this set we're going to be joined by not one, not two, Ooh. not three, oh no, it's three. Um, <laughs> the first of these, um, a young boy from uh, Canberra Springs, Nebraska, um, on the C melody saxophone, playing the part of Frank Trumbauer. Please welcome the Wild Red McQuaid. <laughs>
Dr. McLean, everybody. <laughs> Goodness me. So, um, in this exact time slot, Sunday morning, two years ago, some of you, those of you who were here may remember some other nonsense which I was also responsible for. Um, this is entirely different, of course. So, for those of you who aren't initiated into the uh, cult of the Mount City Bluebirds, perhaps I should briefly lay out some uh, background information. Um, as I've mentioned, they were formed around about 1924, um, and I've actually got some quotes here which I'm going to briefly read for you, from the bedside storybook of Mr. Eddie Condon, who played guitar in one of the Vitaphone films I've already mentioned, being portrayed today by Mr. Jakob Bullberger. Hooray! <laughs> Rome had a fiddler while it, it, while it was burning. New York, in 1929, had the Mound City Blue Blowers. Uh, I quote, Red Mackenzie was an ex-jockey, born in 1899, the last of ten children christened William. After breaking both arms in his chosen profession, he retired and hopped bells at the Claridge Hotel in St. Louis. Standing on the sidewalk, waiting for patrons to arrive, he folded a piece of paper across a comb and blew tunes to amuse himself. A young clerk named Dick Slevin came out of Butler the Brothers' store with a kazoo and hummed along to the music. Slevin knew a man named Jack Bland, who played a banjo. Bland, Slevin, and Mackenzie began playing together. Eichen Jones got them a recording date with Brunswick. The record sold over a million copies. Um, I should mention Mr. Bland is being portrayed, of course, by Mr. Spatz Langham, who also <laughs> is portraying the singing voice of Red Mackenzie, who, in fact, um, played the comb, which Andy Sharm is playing for you. Um, so we're replicating, we're replicating the sound of the entire band, if not the right roles being taken by exactly the same people, if you get to catch my drift. Um, let me just check how I'm doing for time. Oh, that's fine. It's not going quite as quickly as we thought it would. No, I was going to say, I'm here for a while, I mean, I've got a whole page. Lock the doors. Good. Um, <laughs> okay. Eddie Condon on joining the Mount City Blow Blue Blowers. I ran into Mackenzie. Let's get a drink, he said. I have plans. Would you wear a jersey and a cap and play for Mrs. Vanderbilt's parties? I'd rather play in a jazz band. He grinned. We're going to play jazz. It'll be disguised so that people won't know it, but it'll be jazz. <laughs> you can disagree if you wish. Um, Bland will play the guitar. You'll louse up the banjo. Billings will play the suitcase. Now then. I don't know if anybody here would have seen Hot Suitcase being played before. Um, I certainly haven't really played it much until this year, when we decided to do this little project. Um, but yes, this was a suitcase played by a chap called Mr. Josh Billings, who was not a professional musician, or indeed a trained drummer. Um, rather, he was a jazz fan, and kind of general enthusiast, and, and scenester would be the word we'd use today. Um, but he contrived this amazing instrument, which he devised all of his own, and created a role for himself in jazz history. Um, Eddie Condon, again, I quote. In a Chicago hotel room during a jam session, Billings had rigged a suitcase to act as a drum. For soft effects, he covered the case with wrapping paper, which he wrinkled and then stroked with whisk brooms. <laughs> eBay's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Um, mm, yes, Mackenzie, dubious but intrigued, let him try the trick with the blowers on a party job. It was a success. Billings was a blue blower. At parties, everybody wanted to play the suitcase, and sooner or later, everyone did, even Mrs. Vanderbilt. <laughs> he kicked suitcases to pieces pretty fast. I went with him to the luggage shops to watch the proprietors when Billings tried out their wares. <laughs> the man would bring several. This is our best, he would say, pointing to a particular one. A very nice bag, Billings would say. Then he would kick it. <laughs> the proprietors never said anything. This was during the Depression. But as Billings tapped, slapped, and kicked the bags, listening and muttering to himself, I had the pleasure of observing the effect on a man's face on the gradual discovery that he was dealing with a dangerous lunatic. <laughs> a feeling I'm sure you're beginning to become accustomed to. Finally, we shall hear a little bit about the instrument that Andy's played. Do you want to just demonstrate your... Uh... I think they've heard enough. All right. I'm going to just sort of oh, sure. show them what it is. <laughs> just a comb. <laughs> and uh, Red used newspaper for instance. Yes. Dead. We're going to hear a little bit about this okay. in a moment. All right. So you wrap it around, and then yep. what happens? Just wrap it around, pull it tight, and then uh, hopefully it works. Just, I'm going to do it. 
Yeah. That's why I went to music school. Yeah. How do you show everybody? I used to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So finally, we'll hear a little bit about Red Mackenzie and what paper he used. Mackenzie used up a lot of paper whilst blowing through his coat. Every day he cut part of the evening world into strips, which he put in various pockets. The texture of the world, he discovered, was just right for blue blowing. <laughs> One night, a customer asked him what special paper he used to get such amazing sounds. I use the evening world, Mackenzie said. The customer looked concerned. You know, the world is being sold, he said. It's going over to be the telegram. What are you going to do then? I'm going over with it, said Mackenzie. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I should mention that uh, Josh Billings, the, the drummer, the suitcase player, um, in 1929 was in a car accident and lost his front teeth. So if you go onto YouTube and find the, uh, the Vitaphone films with the Man City Three Blowers playing like this, he's missing his two front teeth. And I tried to find a cheap and uh, convenient solution to blacking out my two front teeth. We're short of physically knocking them out. There didn't seem to be an easy way of doing that. So you'll have to just make do with imagination. Right, let's play another tune, shall we? Okay. This one is My Gal Sal, which is in fact in the same film as uh, I Ain't Got No Body, which we played before. Uh, once again, Spats is going to sing it for you. Off we go. So you do a chorus first. Yeah, you're going to learn too well. Okay. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> about, I don't know, November time? No, maybe not after that, maybe December, when I first mentioned to uh, the powers that be that I was, you know, they asked, is there anything you'd like to do at Whitley Bay? And I said, well, maybe Mount City Blue Blowers. And uh, Patty got in touch to say, oh, are you going to do this next tune that we're going to play? And seeing as it's her festival, I really couldn't turn her down, could I? So um, to finish with, we're going to have our three special guests, Michael, you've already heard, um, and we're going to be joined by, so this time, actually, it's Pee Wee Russell, everybody. Give yeah. round of applause for Pee Wee Russell. Yeah. On the trombone, here comes Glenn Miller. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
And finally, just putting on his sling, it's Coleman Hawkins. Ah, yeah. oh, yes. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, so, once again, please thank uh, the three chaps who put up with all of this nonsense. Um, on the guitar, Jakob Ulberger. On the banjo, the wonderful Spatz Langham. Blue blowing for you so fantastically here has been Andy Sharm. And lousing up the hot suitcase, uh, myself, Mr. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Paul. Doing a lovely job. Lovely. Right. Lovely. Hello, Lola. Off we go. I'll lead the first and then. Yeah. And then something else. Yeah, I go that. Okay.
the props. Thank you very much. Thank you all. <laughs>